Hey everyone, welcome to BMW Fanatic. If you're looking to gather some information by doing DIYs on your N54 specific car, looking to see some product reviews and information and all that kind of stuff as far as testing products out, all those little pieces. Other big piece, learning some BMW knowledge. A lot of the times it's yes, experience, but two, just knowing some information about your N54, N55, or even E90 car specifics. If all that sounds great, then hopefully you would consider subscribing today. A few things that we need to talk about first. When you're ready to buy that car that you're really planning on doing, and just to put some facts out to you, my car is a 2008 BMW 335i with 150,000 miles on it. I bought it with 92,000 miles. I bought it without a warranty, and my ownership costs have been really low. You know, I'm a firm believer that a high mileage N54, well maintained and taken care of, will last just as long and you'll be perfectly happy. So when you're ready to buy that N54 powered car, you have some options. Is it a CPO car, depending on the year? Is it a 335i with aftermarket warranty or you plan on adding, adding an aftermarket warranty? FYI, aftermarket warranties usually cost about $150 a month. So you have that cost right there, uh, or no warranty. You know, I did not go through a warranty at all and my ownership costs have been low, like I mentioned. So those are some big three things. You're most likely not gonna find a CPO 335i N54, but you never know. You're gonna probably have more of the ones that companies offer extended warranties or you're thinking about doing an extended warranty. You know, those can run $150 a month. I don't spend $150 a month in this car when it comes to that stuff. Now, if you buy one without a warranty, it's really best to, and what I do is save up about $2,000 a year, every year. Now, that doesn't mean that you use that $2,000 every single year. It's just you want to have a place order if something goes wrong, you want to be able to fix it and maintain it and do it yourself, DIY. So with all those factors in mind, let's continue talking about when you show up to the dealership and you see this nice black 335i or in any N54 car, one series or five series, and you want to take it to the next step. First and foremost, pre-purchase inspection, very important. It's going to take out a lot of guesswork when you think about all that stuff. And it's really just as easy as taking it to BMW or if it's a BMW dealer or another indie shop that specializes in the, in the BMWs, pay the couple hundred dollars, it'll save you life. It'll save you everything. I did that with mine and everything checked out. It was a really great car. It was a really great deal. And it's been very good. With that out of the way, Let's walk around the car and I'm gonna show some specific pieces as far as for you to do your preliminary review and then why you do the pre-purchases inspection. This way you can fully understand and look at all a bunch of things. First, you're gonna go up to the car and you're gonna really just kinda of look at it, right? You're gonna see if any there's any body damage and then and really just see how well the paint is. I mean, all you really have to do is you know, gently rub your fingers over the paint. You can really tell if it's technically been taken care of by how smooth it is, if it's been clay barred or whatever, you know, whatever be the case, there's no contaminants on the paint itself. And that's very important. You're gonna look for check engine light codes. That's just a simple one. You go through a lot of that with a pre-purchase inspection. A lot of that's gonna be uh, taken care of with that. You go through your little maintenance log. So the maintenance log, uh, you just go, if you have navigation, you just go hit the middle button. You can see what has been done or what has not been done or coming due. You can also look at, if it doesn't have navigation, you can just go to the BC stock button and do all those, all that stuff and you see the same maintenance items. When you're going around the car, check the tire width, you know, check all that kind of stuff. Just see what it's at. Look for dents and dings and any major scratches or anything like that. Uh, you know, especially if it's a black car. Go over to the hood area and pop the hood. And this is where all the magic's gonna happen. This is where you're gonna really try to see what all is going on with this 335i. You're gonna look for engine leaks. You're gonna look for coolant leaks. Now my car is hot currently right now, but you're gonna to wanna to screw off the cap. If you see blue coolant, that's very important. If you do not see blue coolant, then you will have, you're having oil mix with your coolant lines, which go through the oil filter housing gasket. So you got that. You're gonna look for leaks all around here, all around the front. You can feel down in here, if I get it more towards the top, stick your hand right down in here, 
and you can go ahead and just wiggle the belt. You can see if it's loose or if it uh, has any frays on it or anything like that. You can just see the overall condition of the car itself. Now, like I said, with my car being hot, what you can also do is reach down your arm down in here and wiggle your wastegate uh, arms. And then that way you can see if it's a major wastegate rattle or some. FYI, you will have some wastegate play. They, they rattle a little bit being brand new. Don't freak out if it just rattles just a little bit when you're trying to take your fingers and make some noise out of it. That's normal. Uh, so don't be worried about that. But if you have large play back and forth, then that's more of a concern. So once you're all set with that piece and you've checked everything underneath the hood, everything's looking good. Now you're doing all this to do your own preliminary check. You are still going to do a pre-purchase inspection just because the pre-purchase inspection is going to look a lot further than what you're going to be looking right now. But you're checking the major oil leaks. And one thing to note, you can also feel around the gasket, look around the valve cover. You will see oil that will pull down there if your valve cover gasket's leaking. Bring a flashlight with you as well. You can also shine the flashlight down the front, see if there's any oil leaks down the front, down the belly pan. That belly pan will hide a lot of oil, especially coolant as well. So you have to be careful on that because you won't be able to see that, but the pre-purchase inspection will look at all that kind of stuff. So not to worry there. You're also gonna feel around your rotors and stuff like that. See if they really have a lip on them. And that's gonna mean just filling on the actual rotor itself. And that will tell you technically how worn down they are. So you can really see there. If you have a tire gauge, you can bring that. I've done that before. If you have a brake pad gauge, I mean, all this stuff is easily sold online. So really don't need to spend a lot of money on it. You can stick the little filler gauge in the brake pads. You can get an idea as far as what's the outside pad thickness, just any kind of little things to help you make a firm decision. When we talk about warranties, and when I mean warranties, I'm more specifically talking about recalls. Now you have turbo recall, high pressure fuel pump recall, injector recalls, uh, and a few other little odds and ends uh, as far as recalls go. And they span different years, uh, different this, different that. Uh, you know, if you go into a BMW dealership to buy a car, they can easily tell you if it's already been done. Now, if you do not go to a BMW dealership, the BMW main website, search that VIN number as far as on your car and you can get some history on it. You can also visit your local BMW dealership since they do put the VIN numbers online when you're looking for your car and you can go up to the service counter and say hey can you pull this VIN number i want to see all the history on i want to know what all has been done to it bmw wise or anything in general that goes through all the bmw systems they will do that for you free of charge so that's another thing that you need to think about now going into the inside of the car so the inside you want to i mean you want to see how everything is inside you want to see just wear and tear on the seats or anything like that you know you want to look at all those kind of pieces and really just kind of get an idea as far as the condi overall condition of the car itself that's really important same thing goes with startup starting up the bmw does it have a shake at idle does it have anything quirky like that anything for you to ask questions about make sure to identify ask and continue to follow up now with that out of the way and you and you're good to go on that piece you're going to continue to look around the car see if you see any odds and ends anything weird any kind of chip glass chip chip paint anything along those lines when you're looking at the car itself now like i said my car has 150,000 miles on it currently it still looks just the same as it looked when i bought it technically uh, the paint has contamination on it but quick clay bar polish and wax all that good stuff and you know doing the whole shebang really kind of helped out a lot but it was really just some light contaminants that were uh, that were on it
everything was completely stock and all was well. Now, the main point that I'm trying to prove with, you know, you're going to look at the BMW, you're checking VIN, you're checking tires, you're checking body, you're checking this, you're checking that, you're checking recalls, and you're doing a pre-purchase inspection, and you're looking at it yourself, this all goes back to how much money you are going to try to negotiate off. Because let's say the pre-purchase inspection comes back and say, yeah, you know, your tires are a little worn, brakes are getting really close to being changed, found a leak here and there, found a hose that needs replaced. All this stuff adds up. You want to be able to get knock off as much money as possible. So that way when you buy the car, you have a spare five to eight hundred dollars who knows or a thousand dollars i don't know if they would depend on how much they would physically take off of the car but you know anything to help you along the along the way now i noticed when i bought my car that uh, i was able to get another five hundred dollars out of them because it had uh, some not so good front tires uh, you know all that kind of stuff anything that you can knock off from the dealership that will save you money in the long haul and that way you can make that firm decision when you're looking to buy a bmw well everyone hopefully you found this video very informative I tried to use my car as an example so that way you can make that informed decision when you're looking to physically buy one go through everything that i mentioned don't skip anything take your time sometimes it's okay to say no and you'll pass on a car or if it just doesn't feel right to you or if something comes back don't get caught in the moment to where you're like, I need this car so bad, this is perfect, but it has these other issues. Don't make the mistake. A well-maintained N54 like mine with 150,000 miles on it still runs great. Yes, I had to do some maintenance stuff, but I've had it for you know over 60,000 miles. I mean, things are gonna come up with having a higher mileage car, that's fine, but that's the whole point. You save that money every year, so when things do pop up, it's no surprise to you, and that's the biggest thing. I don't want you to get caught off guard or you make the bad decision of buying one that you don't do an inspection on, it has all these kind of issues, or you have no money to maintain it or anything like that. I don't want that to happen to you. So please be careful when you're buying a 335i or N54 car, 135i or 535i. Do your checks, do your research, and at the end of the day, you will be happy that you did everything that you needed to do. You might look like the crazy person that is asking way too many questions, but it's your purchase. It's your investment. You want to make sure that the money you put in your car and that you're paying for, if you're paying with cash or whatever be the case, or financing on the other end, that you don't get screwed. So that's what I'm trying to convey to, to you guys. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully you found the video informative. Give it a thumbs up if you did. As always, please be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Pretty nice here in Columbus, Ohio. Best of luck on your purchase. If you're looking to buy one very soon, let me know if you have any questions. Take care, have a great day.